Today I'm going to share some of my favorite painting failures. I have a great fondness for these failures. Let's get started. I was talking with some artist friends of mine and we all agreed that we thought that we learned the most from our failures than from our successful paintings. So I thought I would share some failures with you or what I consider failures. And you don't have to be kind to me. You know, I accept these as not what I wanted them to be. And that's perfectly okay. They are part of what has made me the painter I am today. Although on any given day, I can paint a clunker. There's no question about that. It happens from time to time. There's That's just the nature of, of any endeavor, whether it be baking or painting. You're going to have successes and failures. So now I'm going to show you, I'm going to insert inside this painting. This painting I, I feel is a success. I felt like I hit the values correctly. I had the intensity of color that I wanted. Uh, I was successful at not making it an island surrounded by oceans painting. And here is the first painting that I did, which you first saw that came up. See, that was, so that was the first painting, the one that's in the little square. The values were all wrong. Everything I did, I started out with going too dark from the very beginning and then couldn't recover with any kind of subtlety. Certainly not a white peony at all, and I was painting a white peony. Sometimes you have to paint a bad one in order to make adjustments. And I remember very clearly when this happened, I thought to myself, oh, you were treating it like a white thing. You were treating it like a um, like any other object. And so I had to recalibrate my head and say to myself, okay, what would the darkest darks on a white be? And then I could adjust from there. So in essence, what I did was started out too dark. My very first strokes were too dark and it skewed everything off. And once you make a value decision that's really incorrect, there's sort of no way back from that. So that's what happened in that particular case. It's hard to believe that these two paintings were of the same peony, but indeed they were. But I learned a lot from that. Now when I sit down and do a white peony, I always say to myself, remember it's white and don't make everything too dark from the beginning. This painting um, I was pretty happy with. It is a scene that I see often in our neighborhood. Very flat landscape because there's a little bit of a valley, but the sky was very dramatic. Here was the mistake. When I went back to do final touches, I went in and made that dark, let's call it a dragon, a sea serpent, sea serpent, whatever you want to call it, it's too dark. Now I'll show you again. See, it stands alone on its own, but when I went in and put that last value shape in, boy, was that a mistake. I should not have done that. And that does happen. And I probably, I would imagine I could have, I, or maybe I did lift it off, I don't know, but I thought it was really uh, important to show what an error that is. Boy, it just, it, it it's amazing how bad that, bad that shape is, both in color, shape, value, kind of everything. It crosses, it crosses the line for me in every possible way. But the thing I do like about this is I do like all the neutrals going on in the sky, kind of a stormy sky, and I like that, and I was trying to keep all the brush strokes kind of blocky. And so I was happy with that. I do like the painting before I went and uh, finished it. And that is sometimes what happens. Sometimes I see in the videos where I ha had a sweet spot in the painting, but I kept going. That was my mistake. And that was my mistake on this one. So, oh, I remember this one. Whoa, whoa. This is, this is an epic fail. I would call this an epic fail. And the reason I call it an ep epic fail is because I can't find any difference... It, the values are so confusing. It's so confusing. Everything. I like the intensity of color. Good on that. Um, the shapes aren't bad, but they are too close in value. And so everything, it, it, it almost looks like a kaleidoscope to me. I can't focus. So epic fail on that one. <laughs> now it's fun to look at, but I remember when I did it, I just thought I was appalled. I was trying to push color. And sometimes when you're trying to do something, you go too far. Ah, here's an example of not going far enough. Yeah, it's a pleasant painting, pleasant enough, but the value range isn't there. If you squint your eyes, even the darks are just eh, just slightly out of the mid-tones, not much. It needs to be so much stronger. And I could go back to this painting and strengthen it up, but uh, once I lose interest in something, I've lost interest in it, and so um, I just move on. So that's what happened there. Not enough value range on that one.
Oh, this one. Boy, I painted this one three, four, I don't know how many times. I painted this a lot of times. And it suffers from the same thing that that uh, rose I just showed you that was confusing. It's the same problem. All the colors have too much of the same intensity. They're pretty close in value. The uh, actual composition is confusing. I don't know why I was so determined to make this work. And I think it was one of those things where, you know, this marriage just cannot be saved. And in the end, I, I put a dark background in thinking maybe that would save it. That made it, to me, even worse. Although the feedback from other artists was that it was okay. They thought it was okay. But for myself, and this I'm sure happens for you too, if it crosses a line for you into something you don't like, you just can't rehabilitate it. Luckily, you can with people. But for me, not with paintings. Once they cross a the line, there's no going back. This I spent a lot of time on too. By a lot of time, I mean I painted it 3, 12, 15, I don't know how many times. This, these, this was a couple of pairs under a direct light that I had set up. And what I was trying to do was almost pixelate. I was trying to just look at value, not as much as shapes, but just looking at where those transitions were. I thought this was going to be fantastic. I thought this was going to be a terrific new avenue. But... I, there's something, I, I don't like it. I think why I don't like it is because they're, the value swap out of, on the pair of that dark on the left hand side of the pair, the swap out I made of the violets is too, it's too strong. You know, those needed to be in the greens or neutrals, I'm not sure, but it just doesn't work for me. So this one crossed the line as well. Let's see what comes up next. I, mo I, I, was, I had to, it's not that it's hard for me to look for failures, but I don't keep them all. This one I don't think failed. <laughs> this one, I needed to put something in there to keep my spirits up. This was successful. This was just three pieces of popcorn lined up in a line. And I think the reason I wanted to include it is because sometimes the simplest thing that you don't think is going to make a great painting will. I mean, this is, this is not rocket science, this one. But I uh, sure do like the background, and I, I, I like everything about this one. I feel very warm toward my popcorn painting. So now I'll go back to some... Oh, no, I decided to put two in that I didn't think were failures. This one is a high-key painting, meaning it doesn't have a strong value range, just like the bicycle one didn't. But it's okay with me on this one, because I stayed in the high key all the way through. There's something about this and the strong sunlight that I really like. Probably if there had been strong sunlight on my bicycle, I could have lived with the high keyness of it, but uh, I could not live with the high keyness of it. So, And I really like how I kept the whites of the paper white on this one. So I pat myself on the back for that. And the subtlety of the shadow underneath the lemon. Yeah, I feel good about this one. All right, back to ones that we don't feel so good about. Let's see. Oh, this one. Yes. Not enough of a value range. I was just too wedded to the picture. It just looks washed out to me. It looks like what I always say is going to happen if you don't have a strong enough value range, you know, that's been in the wash a hundred times. It's not strong enough by any means, although accurately painted, but the value range, although not wrong, it, la it lacks brightness. This one, oh boy, this one, well, it's supposed to be a rose, but it's flat. You can see how flat it is. And that is because the values are wrong. I got my darks, me mediums, and lights, but there's no subtleties in between. And I really don't like how red my dark is. Oof, I really don't like that. There's something too harsh about that, that I end up looking at the dark reds and not at the rest of the form. So I was, I was disappointed in that. Here's another one where the reds inside the peony are too red. I was going for intensity of color, but boy, I went for the wrong color. Oh, I went for the wrong color. It hurts my eyes now. Although at one time I must have been proud of it because I framed it. But that's long since gone. <laughs> These things are ephemeral. They come and go. Ah, this is where I started as a painter. And I don't consider this a failure, but I do consider it not where I am anymore. Everything is too bright. I didn't understand neutrals yet. So the only neutrals I could see were, I considered sort of purple and neutral. But Everything is color in this painting. Absolutely everything that's not white is color, and it's too much color. It's too much intensity. Although good on me for getting the values right. That was good, and I like the composition too. But um, this would never fly off my easel today. I think the next one suffers from too much brightness as well. Too much intensity of color. Yeah, too much brightness, too much intensity of color. Not understanding neutrals and, or nuances yet. 
uh, which I think I understand a lot better now, which I'm glad for and kind of still feel fondly about these paintings. But for my eye now, they are way, way too bright and too harsh and lack any kind of what I consider now like a sensitivity toward neutrals that I, that I hope I, uh, no, I believe I have on a good day. I do have on a good day. <laughs> and today was a good day for painting. Let's see what the, oh, this is one of the first paintings I ever, ever, not, I don't want to say ever did, but this was one of the first paintings where I felt like, okay, I got something, but I keep this around for a reason because it's a classic. First of all, I signed it, so I must have been really proud of it. I never signed paintings anymore. But it suffers from, I didn't understand no tan at the time. I didn't understand the underlying structure of a painting. And so it suffers from that thing where everything looks like it was cut out with scissors and then pasted down. Things, forms don't blend into forms. They're no lost and found edges. Ah, this. This is a real case of not enough color intensity, not enough of a value range. On the left-hand side, I like what's happening in that one tree where there's some orange and some dark greens. That left-hand side is where things needed to continue to happen, but it got washed out and faded as I went through on the right-hand side. I would, I would certainly make things stronger today. The color choices were correct, but I would go with a thicker paint and more pigment from the very beginning. And that was, that's missing. Although a sense of sunlight is there. I got to give myself that one. That's our driveway. <laughs> oh, and this one, I decided to end on an up note. The reason I'm keeping this as an up note is this is a painting from long, long ago. And every, it's a ca case where everything sort of fell together. I was still in my too bright phase, but that's okay. I still stand by this painting. And the reason I'm including it is because my mentor purchased this painting from me. And if you ever live long enough or paint long enough to have your mentor buy a painting from you, it really makes you feel like a million bucks. It makes you feel like, like you won the lottery. So I wanted to, so I wanted to include this and let you know that I have very warm feelings toward this painting. So I hope sharing my failures helps a little bit. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, the paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color, and please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.